imagine to be on this bridge, a long, swinging, unstable bridge. If you look down, you see a disaster. People are starving. People are dying for too much unhealthy food. You can't swim in the ocean. You can't walk without a mask. But if you look at the sides of this bridge, there is a land, a wonderful land. People and nature is thriving. Oceans are populated by fish and no plastic. Food, healthy food, is accessible for everyone. I imagine you, like me, would like to find yourself on the mainland and not down there. The reality is that we are on this bridge, and the only thing we can do is to run fast before the bridge is falling down. When I was younger, I suffered from eating disorders. At some point, food was more a problem than a pleasure. Luckily enough, I was in love with sport. I was extremely active. But when I moved to Moscow for studying, things were changing. My surrounding was changing. More pollution, more cold, different temperature, less nature outdoor. At that point, both food and physical activity became a problem. It was at that specific moment that I had an idea. Starting a company able to track physical metrics in order to reward people for healthy behaviors with healthy food. Everything I started standing for at that point was about nudging daily actions that are good for our body and good for our planet. Sport taught me to commit for a change, and food taught me what that change needed to be. Being the best medicine we can put into our body and the best mitigator we can use for our planet. Food was my problem, and food became my purpose. It was at that specific moment that I met an idea, which is now an amazing for-purpose organization spread all over the world. Our name is Future Food Institute, and we touch thousands of lives every single year in order to make this planet more sustainable. Our food system more accessible ultimately more understood by everyone. The way we do that is actually leading research, education, and design of innovative solutions in the food system. One of our main initiatives is a journey, is a worldwide journey, which is called the Food Innovation Global Mission. We take our students, starting from Italy and going west, coming back in Italy after 60 days from East. The idea is to stop in the main locations all around the world which are leading a change in the food system. We call them food innovation hubs. Over there, our staff with our students are meeting people, real people, which are making the future happening. They are innovators, they are food makers, food hackers. They are entrepreneurs, institutions. There are people who are putting on the ground great, inspiring ideas. Out of them, we take inspirations, we take stories, we take, of course, interviews. And then, coming back, what we did is actually to write a collection of four books and a documentary, which are under the platform called Food Shapers. These are stories that, for me, as for the students, and I hope for many other people, will change the perspective looking at the food system, and we change the way we think about our possible actions from moving to move from this bridge to the mainland. So now, let me allow to share with you some of these stories. The first topic that we covered is about proteins. How do we feel almost 10 billion people by 2050 in a sustainable way? Plant-based mimics are apparently a very big thing. Imagine to it something that tastes, bleed, smell, look like meat, but actually is not. It's made out of plant-based proteins. Imagine your brain being fooled by your taste when in the morning you have your scrambled eggs that are actually not eggs at all. Another interesting topic when we talk about proteins it's about insects. Have you ever tried to eat insects? 
Insects are actually the most sustainable, one of the most sustainable sources of proteins that we have on our planet. Just to give you an idea, to produce 100 pounds of chicken proteins, it needs 2,000 gallons of water. To produce the same amount of egg proteins, we need 400 gallons of water. And to produce the same amount of cricket-based proteins, we need one gallon of water. So as you can imagine, from Asia and South American cultures, where insects have been part of the culture, now this trend is coming to the Western world. In different forms, like chips, like bread, like pasta, like snacks. Everything that in the Western world we are most used to. And finally, protein manufacturing. Imagine 10 years from now, you walk in your apartment after a day of work, and what you find is a steak on your counter, but you never went shopping. Imagine culturing, growing meat at home in your place. So actually, we met a biohacking group in Japan, which is open sourcing culturing technology to allow everybody to grow meat at home without polluting, without killing animals, without going shopping. And the same is happening in the 3D printing world, actually in Spain, where the first 3D printer for plant-based steak was made and is up and running. But protein is not the only challenge that we have in the food system. Waste is another one. We actually waste one-third of the food that we produce. The question is, how might we change the paradigm going from waste to value. One solution is for sure upcycling. Upcycling is about finding a new purpose to food. Imagine using barley, which is the leftover from the brewery process, mill it and have a flour for your snacks, for your bread, for your pasta. Imagine to take the peels of oranges and use technology to make the texture out of it, textile, fashion. All these things are happening. People are using technologies and great brains in order to upcycle the things which are left over from the food system at the moment. But when we talk about waste, there is also a gap in the food system. There is also something which is missing. In this case, we have technologies that are allowing people to tag food in the fridge in order to get the expiration date automatically to detect it, and then have your fridge in the phone. And so having prompts every day about what you should eat in order to avoid this waste. But waste is also about something else. It's also about our sense of beauty. Actually, one-fifth of the food that we waste is wasted because it's not beautiful enough. France was one of the first countries to actually start a movement for that. How to make ugly the new beautiful when we talk about food, fruit and vegetables. And now, for example, in California, it's really, really easy to get a box of ugly fruit and vegetables at your doorstep. 50% saving economically, and we are also saving our planet. But where is this waste coming from? Mainly cities. Cities are hosting right now 55% of us. And this figure is supposed to go up to 65% in the next 30 years. So how do we make cities food sustainable and accountable and reliable food systems? First of all, working on the inside of our places, using box and kits that are allowing each of us to grow food at home, using hydroponics, as the new design and furniture in our place to also grow food. A different approach, really popular in Asia, is actually working on the outside of the buildings. What about the rooftop? What about vertical farming? The dream is to make every building food sustainable. But when we talk about cities, there is also another challenge in addition to space which is labor. How can we leverage robotics in order to help us to grow this food more efficiently? So we are talking about robots which are picking fruit and vegetables far faster than we do. 
We are talking about the 3D printing technology, which is actually seeding plants and then watering them, all controlled remotely. So why am I showing you all that? Because food is the problem, but food can also be the solution. Food is responsible for two billion people in the world, which are obese or overweight. It's responsible for 800 million people that are starving in the world. One-fourth of the pollution of this planet is coming from this sector. So food does have problems. But the food system is presenting all around the world also the solutions, being the number one sector in terms of people who are working there. One billion people in the world, one-third of the working population, is actually working in food agriculture. So food is giving purchasing power to all these people. Food has shown to be crucial when put into schools and educational systems to increase the learning experience. Food is the one sector that touches nine of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the UN. So the question that I had after all this exploration was, but well, what about me? What about us? What can each of us do in such a huge system? Well, I think the most beautiful thing about this sector is actually that it's very inclusive. Imagine an astronaut, a football player, an engineer, a teacher, a farmer. All of them have a little in common, but they for sure have one thing. They all eat. At the end of the day, we are all part of the food system. And the offer is aligning to what the demand is asking for. And the demand is made out of us, all of us, each of us. Our shopping cart represents what we stand for. Every time we go grocery shopping, we are making a statement about what we want. So there is an opportunity for each of us to actually commit to little changes, to do a little action. In my case, I came back from the exhibition and I had two main tasks for myself. I'm going to cut plastic bottles for water, and I'm going to cut in half, so just like half it, my consumption of meat. Just doing these two little things that everybody can absolutely do. My footprint of this planet has decreased by 75% in terms of green gas emissions and 70% in terms of water consumption. Because for building to create a plastic bottle for water, it takes three times the amount of water that the, bottle, that the bottle can actually have inside. Eat with purpose. Consume with purpose. So now, I would like just to step back and to look back at this bridge. How do you feel now? I feel empowered. I feel I can do something. But I also feel responsible, which is kind of heavy. There is a saying about the snowflake in an avalanche that will never feel responsible. And I sometimes feel the same. And I know that most of you do the same. You feel such a, lean, a tiny piece on a bigger puzzle, which is hard to see the impact. But actually, we saw that every action makes an impact in driving demand, which is then driving the offer to change the industry. So I'm in the middle of this bridge. I see the challenge. I see that there are innovators from all over the world which are paving the way for all of us to move from this bridge to the mainland. And I know that I'm driving them. I can do that because I do have an impact. We all have an impact. So please, vote with your fork. Thank you.